everyone, and welcome to the Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast. I am your host, Holly. Oops, I probably shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> I live in Virginia with my husband, Nick, my two kids, Colin and Emma, my dog, Willie, and my fat cat, Miss Kitty. Um, welcome to returning viewers, and hello to all new viewers and subscribers. Um, <laughs> big change, I know. Um, my hair is black. And I will go into that because it was a week of hair hell. <clears throat> so, yes. We will get into that later in chatter. And I just wanted to say hello to everyone. Um, today was, a, or not today, this week has been a really slow week on crocheting. Um... It was just one of those weeks where you just felt tired and don't want to do anything. And then with this hair situation, um, yeah, it was just a hot mess situation. Um, I am trying out a new microphone, so, um, cause I know sometimes I can start talking to myself <laughs> and it gets really quiet. So hopefully this will rectify the situation. And we won't have any issues of being able to hear me or not. Um, so let's get into the whips because I have no FOs this week. None. Not at all. Um, so the first one we'll do is because I have uh, nothing but good things to say about it. I'm like one of the other uh, whips we will talk about. So this is the, like I said, it's been a slow week. I haven't, I feel like I haven't done anything. I haven't done jack squat this week. This is the Glacier Cowl by Jan Steinhilber, or Jean Steinhilber. Um, and I am using, um, Oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking on the yarn I'm using right now. This is, no, it's not Karen Cakes. Oh my gosh. And I have Bernat Pops sitting right next to me. It is a sweet roll. <laughs> it is Premier Sweet Roll. You can find it on joannes.com. Oh, and the other, okay, sorry, off topic. Colorway is Ice Pop. So this is going to be a nice big cowl. And I'm going to make a matching headband and I will have these up for sale whenever I get one more additional color of this pattern done because I wanted to put a few different colors up so if someone doesn't like blue because there's blue in both of them so far they can pick one without blue um yes oh but the premiere rolls that I was talking about I believe last podcast is called Candy Shop and I think it's called Marled when they put two colors together in the same strand so they like twist two colors together. They are so bright and pretty but that was the one I was talking about. I couldn't remember the name of it and it was called Candy Shop and you can only get it online on Joann's joann.com. I always want to throw in an S, like, it's Joann's, not Joann, Joann fabric. It's Joann's fabric, well, to me at least. <laughs> I always throw in an S. Okay, next whip, oh God, is the Honey Blossom Shawl. That is part of the Honey Blossom Cowl that I am running. Oh my gosh. I just want to, okay, I gotta watch the mic. I want to personally apologize to everyone who started this cowl and bought this pattern, or if you got it for free, that's awesome because you didn't have to waste your money like me and a few other people did, quite a few. Um, this pattern was written terribly, and I'm gonna read this, I'm gonna read this designer to filth because. I I just don't understand. She wrote a pattern, published it, 
like put it out for everyone to buy. It is written terribly. <laughs> There's no explanations. There's no pictures, no chart, nothing. It's just what she wrote and what she wrote was written badly. And I have tried getting in contact with her and it's been over a week now, nothing. Like I told her I was having issues. I needed some clarification, nothing. No, oh, I'm sorry that you are having trouble. No, nothing. I haven't heard anything from the designer and it's like, I feel like when you put your patterns out there and if they're free, you know, I can understand a little leeway with getting back to people quickly. But when someone's buying your pattern, the product you put out and there are multiple people having issues and you just decide not to write back, that is just terrible customer service one. And two, I feel like you're robbing people because you're not fixing it, you're not writing back, and people are paying for your pattern that is written ridiculously bad. Um, luckily, we, as the Cal group, was able to figure out what was wrong and how to fix it. Um, and the only people that really have put project pages up are the people that have started the Cal. Um, one other person put one up, but on her notes, it had nothing but good things to say. And I don't know if this is a new pattern and the older pattern was written better or, I mean, and all the comments on the page was saying, oh, thank you. It's a beautiful pattern. Can't wait to try it. Blah, blah, blah. But nothing. So I will be writing about how bad this pattern is on Ravelry because I don't think it's fair for someone to buy something and just be completely disappointed with it. And like I said, I want to apologize because I should have done my research. I should have tested the pattern at least. Yeah, I should have tested the pattern because reading a pattern isn't going to show you the issues. You have to start doing it. And that is completely my fault. My bad. I apologize for anybody who feels like they've wasted their money in participating in this cow. Honestly, it's like, I feel bad because I should have done my research better. And I didn't because this is the first cal I've run and I, and most people made it sound like you pick a pattern, you start and everyone does it together. There's no further research. And this time, this next time, when I do a cal, it might be a while. The next time I do do a cal, I will be testing the pattern first personally before I even announce a cal for that pattern because this is just crazy. Um, so the pattern is the Honey Blossom Shawl by Genty Lyons. Um, mine, I have noticed I am doing in a hook way too small. I did the hook recommended by the designer, which is a three millimeter, which is kind of crazy considering this is a lightweight yarn and on the ball it recommends at least a four millimeter hook I believe so right there I should have known I was doing something off and unlike everybody else I seem to have an issue finding the center of this stupid thing because I like I don't have a center like point going up so I must be doing something wrong um, and it's super wavy, which the wavy part I know is because my hook size is too small because I'm not doing, um, I don't want to give the pattern away because it is paid pattern, even though it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't even be a pattern to begin with. Um, but the issue that we found in the group was that the center point here wasn't specified clear enough that you're only supposed to do it at the center and not in every little single crochet that they have up there. Um, so yeah, this is mine so far. It's really wavy and I have to frog it because it is really wavy or block this sucker aggressively, but this is acrylic. So I don't know how well acrylic blocks, 
Like, I've heard, you know, merino will stretch, it'll grow. I've heard alpaca will really grow, you know, but I don't know how well um, acrylic blocks because I say I'm going to block stuff, but half the time I never get around to it. And a lot of the times it's something so minor that you can't really tell. But this, because it's all kind of lacy, this needs to be blocked. But I I have to rip it out because I know um, I'm using a hook size too small. Excuse me, my nose is running. Um, but I have a feeling that if I rip this sucker out, I'm not, I'm not going to do it again because the, the pattern is just written terribly. So I'm sitting at a crossroads of do I frog it and try again? Do I frog it and forget it? I mean, cause I'm, yeah, I'm part of the cow. I'm running it, but it's not like I'm going to win anything. That's, you know, um, I'm not winning any prizes. You know, I'm doing it along simply for, I liked the pattern picture, <laughs> not the actual pattern itself. I loved the picture and I loved the way it looked, but at this point, I feel like it's not even worth it. Um, I might as well save my yarn for something that I'm actually going to like. Um, so yeah. Also, totally almost forgot about this. Cow prizes. There has been a prize added for this cow. Um, Jody Fieldhouse from the Evan Gaze podcast has generously donated one of her patterns for one of the winners. Um, so if you go to her Ravelry store, <laughs> if you go to her Ravelry store, she has, I think like, um, I think it's like seven patterns that she has written up so far. Um, and if you like one of her patterns on your FO entry, I want you to put Evan Gay's podcast as your um, prize that you would like to win if you are picked. So we have Mandala, Lion, Lion Brand Mandala Sphinx, Sphinx, Lion Brand Mandala Gnome. You have the Crochet World Pattern Book. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. The Pattern Magazine, I should say, because it's a magazine. Or Evan Gay's Podcast, so you can get one of her patterns for free. How nice. Like, that is, I was so shocked when she wrote me. I was like, that is so nice in general. General? Generous of her to do that, you know? Like, that's an income for someone, and that's nice. So... Moving on, that was all, that was the update for the cow. And if I find that everyone's having an issue, I may pull a prize for Chatter Thread, just because I just, I feel terrible, honestly, because I should have done my research. But anyways, enough of that blubbering. So my next FO, or my next whip, is kind of a sneak peek, because I am in the process of writing a pattern. After having that tremendously bad shawl pattern, I was inspired to write a better one. <laughs> so um, this is what I've been working on. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it. But this is what I am working on. This is also wavy because I am using a hook size too small. I just grabbed a ball of yarn, grabbed a hook, wasn't really paying attention to size and just started crocheting something up and writing it down as I went. Um, so this is what we're looking at so far. So, and this is um, Bernat Pop. The colorway is, um, hello, right in your face. Lipstick on your collar. How cute is that? Like this is the full cake. Um, it doesn't really have that many yards, so probably going to use about two whole cakes. But the good thing about this pattern is I'm writing it so you could pretty much use any yarn weight, any hook size, something. I mean, I'm going to suggest doing at least two hook sizes up 
from whatever your yarn calls for. So if it's a fingering weight, you're probably gonna wanna do like a four millimeter hook. If you're gonna do worsted, probably a seven to eight millimeter hook. Yeah, because you want it flowy and drapey without it bunching up like it is with mine because I wasn't paying attention. And I think it's seven, it's a seven row repeat. So you can make this as big or as small as you want. Like you could totally leave it here and make it like a little chalet um, or make it huge, make it like a schlanket, a huge triangular schlanket. <laughs> so yes, it is a triangular shawl and I am totally loving this design. Pat on my back, yep. <laughs> I just, after dealing with the Honey Blossom Cal, I was just like, I'm like, I have to put something out there that's better than that. <laughs> and I just got the inspiration. I just grabbed something out of my stash, started making it. Um, and I think the name of this one, I was kind of inspired by the actual colors too. Um, I think I'm going to call it Summer Romance. The Summer Romance Shawl. Um... So I don't know why summer, because this looks like this is going to be pretty dang warm. But I think if you use a lighter weight yarn or maybe even cotton, it would be nice to wear during summer. On those nights by the bonfire and it's like low 70s with a wind, you know. Oh, totally taking me back to California on the beaches. <laughs> so that is a sneak peek pattern. I've already written up half of it. I just have to redo one of the repeats because on the row with these stitches right here, not the shells, but these stitches, they're different. They kind of alternate. So on one, you're skipping, like in one you're doing it in one stitch and then in the other one you're not. You're skipping it. So yeah. So I have to go through and just fine tune it and I will be having pattern testers. I will be making a chart for it. Um, I'm still debating whether or not I'm gonna do pictures just because that is a lot of work because then I have to make it again. Like once I get it fine tuned, I have to make it again and it's tested. I wanna make sure I have pattern testers that tell me whether or not it is crap. <laughs> so, once it's pattern tested, fine tuned, you know, that takes a while to sit there and take pictures of every little, not every step, but steps that may be a little more difficult. Um, with like where you're placing your stitch is mainly the issue that I feel people are gonna come across is where exactly stitches are supposed to be placed. Um, but yes, I will be having that out hopefully within this next month. So it is, so within the next 15 days, I'm hoping to at least have it fine tuned and out to pattern testers. So if you would like to test my pattern, <laughs> let me know either on Instagram or um, down here on Facebook that way, or even on Ravelry, pretty much anywhere. Um, just let me know. I'm looking probably about five pattern testers. So once I get five, it's done. Um, so I'm hoping to at least have this written up within the, I'm hoping to have it written within the next week, like fully written out within the next week or two. I'm going to be generous and say two. <laughs> so by the end of the month before February or at February, I don't know. <sighs> yes. So like I said, I have no FOs, um, but I do have some yarn hoarding. So my husband, he's like, go to Michael's and buy stuff. I was like, say what? Say that again. What? Did you just tell me to go to my favorite store to buy things? He says, yes. He wanted me to buy stuff to paint. So during last Halloween, I bought like ceramics to paint, um, to kind of decorate the house and stuff like that. Just little things that we could put around. You know, I bought like a candle holder for me because I love candles and I actually used to make candles as a business and after that failed epically, <laughs> I 
I quit that one. I was done putting money in where it was not coming back. So um, I'll leave the candle making to those big people. Um, so he wanted me to go and I was like, well, what did you want? Because they don't sell ceramic-y type stuff unless it's like Halloween or Christmas with like, you know, I know with Halloween they sell like a Frankenstein head or a vampire head, you know, stuff like that or pumpkins. But I haven't seen that outside of that. And Christmas, I don't know if they do sell those. Like, maybe, like, a little Christmas tree or something. I don't know. But I told them, I was like, they normally don't sell those unless it's during, like, a holiday. A big holiday. And he was like, oh, no, it's fine. Just do, like, a birdhouse or something. So I bought these really cool birdhouses. And mine will probably stay in the house. Well, I don't know. Mine might go outside. Because it's, like, a little cottage. Like, a cabin type um birdhouse oops sorry I just bumped the mic um my husband got a pirate ship and my daughter got a um like this big huge townhouse looking one <laughs> I'm like you're sure you want that one she's like yes this is the one I'm like okay but anyways <laughs> and I'll tell you another story it's super funny so <laughs> I went and of course they were having their buy, buy two, get one free sale on their yarn. So I have never bought these. This is my first set, and these are the Karen Cupcakes. And these are pretty much made to make hats. Um, they have a hat pattern. They even come with a little pom-pom. So this is my daughter's. This is the colors that she picked out. And the colorway is Sweet Berries. I thought these were super cute and they're small and perfect for beanies. Um, and she picked out this one for my son, which is Mango Tango. Um, so I bought two and I was like, well, I'm not gonna just not get the third one like for free, hello. Um, and this one is cherry on top. So super cute. This is the one that I wanted for my son, but Emma picked this one for Colin instead. And I was like, okay, that's the one you want. So I got those. So this is my yarn hoarding segment of the podcast. And I was like, those are super cute. And of course, right next to them were the Karen Big Cakes. Oh, also, um, the cupcakes are 100% acrylic. I know the normal Karen cakes are 80% acrylic, 20% wool. Um, but those ones are 100% acrylic. So if you have a wool allergy, you don't have to worry. Uh, oh my God, that could have been a disaster. That could have been a disaster. Sorry, I was whispering. Hopefully the mic caught that. I don't know if it did. This is my first time using it. I tried testing it and I can't tell if it's using the mic that's on the computer or the mic that's right here. So I don't know. Anyways, right next to the Karen Cupcakes were these big boys. These are the Karen Big Cakes. And these are also 100% acrylic. Um, that is not coming out quite as bright. So the green's a little brighter. This is in Shadowberry. And I'm thinking I bought these with the intention to actually make the pattern that's on the dollar band because it's super pretty and I've, I don't know if that's like chevrons or ripples what is it catch some waves oh it's a knit oh, jerk I should have read that it's a knit blanket um well I'll just find some kind of wavy ripple blanket I really like those cables down the center. Shoot. Anyways, <coughs> I specifically bought this because I really want to make a throw for my living room. Because right now we have this huge, huge blanket that my mom made a long time ago. And although I love it because my mom made it, um, it doesn't necessarily match. <laughs> my living room so that's why I got this one because there's some greens and grays and blues which are the colors in my living room um, but my mom's she 
It's almost like she made a blanket to display all her variegated yarns. <laughs> because it's like, there's a white, uh, a cream border. It's not white, it's cream. And then you'll have a strip of cream across the top and then a whole ball of variegated. Strip of cream, variegated. Strip of cream, <laughs> variegated. And they're all the same like um, width. So yeah, I think she was having fun using all different types of variegated. And these variegated are so old that they don't even sell them anymore. Like I have not been able to find them in stores anywhere. <laughs> so yeah, but I hold it near and dear to my heart. I normally put it on my bed and we sleep with it, but it was when we had the snowstorm, what was it, two weeks ago, um, we basically used it downstairs and everybody cuddled up on the couch. Oh my God, but I have to tell you this. So after I went to Michael's, I pretty much hid the yarn from my husband. I put it all away before he got home and just left everything else in the bag, which was um, the birdhouses and the paints that I bought. And he comes upstairs as I'm folding laundry and he's like, did you buy your yarn? I was like, what? He's like, you know, because a thought came across to me as I was cleaning the litter box. <laughs> so random. He was like, as I'm cleaning the litter box, I was sitting there thinking she could have came home with yarn, put it away, and I would never even notice. And he was like, I looked at one of your yarn boxes and thought, she could have just put a new ball of yarn in there and I would have no idea. I busted up laughing. He's like, you bought yarn and hid it before I got home, huh? I about died laughing that he basically caught me. <laughs> Cause I feel like all yarn hoarding people tend to do this. They'll buy some and <laughs> hide it before their spouse gets home. I mean, he knows I bought it because it's on the bank statement, you know? Bless you. My dog is sneezing. <laughs> like, he knows I bought it. It's on the bank statement. So I'm not hiding it, but I kind of am. <laughs> so I have it put away, and he was like, how many balls of yarn did you buy? I was like, nine. Because <laughs> I also bought some white, um, I think it was like loops and threads impeccable white for my supernatural graph gan, graph gan which I have not picked up yet this week like I said it was a mess so that was super funny I it's funny so on to the hair debacle on why I have black hair last week I was like oh maybe we'll do a fun color well that was the initial plan my plan was to do a pastel blue. Pastel blue on my hair, really supposed to be light and pretty. It turned green on me. Um, apparently something with the bleach and this pastel blue did not like each other and decided it was going to turn green. And <laughs> Not only that, when I was doing the light blue, I ran out of blue for about this much hair. This much. And I had it about halfway down and the rest of this had nothing. So I had to use the dark blue that I had in my hair before. So the stuff that was underneath here, I had to put in right there. So I was like, oh, it'll be like a gradient right there. It'll be fine. No big deal. Well, that blue came out perfectly fine, but the um, other blue turned green on me. And my husband's like, you have mermaid hair? I was like, no, I did not want mermaid hair. I didn't want green hair. I looked like I got stuck in a swimming pool for a week and haven't washed my hair. <laughs> I looked terrible. So then I was like, okay, I called my sister. I was like, Stephanie, what do I do? Do I go dark brown? Do I go black? I need something to cover this up. Like I can't, like at first I was gonna do dark blue all over and I was like, I don't wanna do dark blue again. It took forever for it to fade. It took forever to wash out. Like I had that blue underneath 
since August. And that's like five months. No, four, four months. And it was not, it was, it says on the box that it's supposed to, or the bottle or box, whatever. It says it's supposed to last four to six shampoos. Four to six shampoos. All the other colors that were in my hair had already washed out, faded out, and that was what I was left with. That stinking blue. So I was like, okay, I don't want to do blue again. And then I was talking to my sister and she mentioned doing dark brown or black. And I was like, okay, well, I'm kind of nervous to go black because I've never done black before. And I am so pale that I was like, I am either going to look like the dead or I could by some miracle <laughs> look like Katy Perry like you know pale skin dark hair and looks gorgeous with it you know beautiful not that I would look like Katy Perry but I'm saying she's so beautiful with the dark hair light skin that it just works for her and there's some people that it just works for so I was like oh my god I don't want to do black I'm too nervous to do black and if I want to change my hair color from black, it takes a lot more work to go lighter. So I was like, uh, uh, like I've always wanted to try it black, but I was really nervous. So I was like, uh, we'll do dark brown. I go to the store, go to Sally's, get my dark brown, put it in, and the bottle says wait 25 minutes. I'm like, okay. Well, I was so thorough putting this in that it took me like 40 minutes to get it all in my hair. And I was kind of freaking out because I had already just dyed my hair. I bleached my hair, mind you, already to do the light blue. So I bleached my hair. I also did a um, this thing called color oops, which is supposed to take fashion colors out. Although it does say on the box that it doesn't take out blues, greens, blues or greens I have heard that it still does through people on YouTube through you know all that stuff so I was like okay I did the color oops first didn't work blue barely faded at all then I bleached it because I had to do my roots and then I had to bleach the blue out which that worked but I only did bleach on the basically the bottom half and then my roots um so those two things, right? Then I had the blue. Now I'm doing brown, so I'm dyeing it. And I was like freaking out. I'm like, okay, I've already dyed it once. I've already bleached it. I'm so worried my hair is going to fall out. My hair is very fine. And I, <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be one of those people that have their hair fall out because they did too much processing of their hair. So I basically talked myself out of doing the whole um well I did the 25 minutes on top but I was like okay 25 minutes I'm done but underneath had already sat for like an hour at this point and I was like freaking out so I washed my hair <laughs> the damn blue was still there so underneath it was brown but there was a blue tint to it so in the sun you could see the blue and when you're not in the sun, it was like this ashy brown weirdness on top, still green and blue. There was brown, but there was still green and blue. I was like, oh my God, this looks terrible. And I almost considered keeping it. I was like, you know what? I don't want to dye my hair again. I am too scared that my hair is going to fall out and break and... I'm going to wind up bald. I call my sister again. I said, Stephanie, I don't know what to do. The, the green and blue is still here. It looks like crap. And then she tells me, well, how long did you wait? I was like, well, the bottle said 25 minutes. She's like, no, you should have at least waited 40, 45 minutes. Me, because I was also, you know, worried that my hair is going to fall out. I didn't do the amount of time that I probably should have. So like the 40, 45 minutes. I was like, what do I do? She's like, you only have one choice. You could either do brown again and probably not going to work or you go black. 
because black covers everything. <sighs> so I took the leap and now my hair is black. <laughs> and I was still so worried because I was yet again dyeing my hair again. And I was like, oh my gosh, my hair is going to fall out. It's going to fall out. Like it's going to happen. Thank God it didn't. I moisture, I literally used two, three, four different conditioners in my hair. <laughs> I was being so paranoid. I was like, my hair is not falling out today. <laughs> so I like, and, and it actually looks pretty good. Like it's shiny and soft and stuff, but this black, oh my gosh, it's like, Oh my goodness. And thankfully I don't look dead. I mean, I look a little on the pale side, but not dead. <laughs> so yeah, my hair debacle just sucked the life out of me. Like, I told my husband, I was like, I'm depressed. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and he's like, just do what your sister said. Do what your sister says. And I'm like, I should trust her. She's been dyeing her hair like 15 years longer than I have. So She's been dyeing her hair since she's like 14 and she's like 31 now going on 32, I believe. So I'm like, she's been dyeing her hair 15 years longer than I have or no. Well, she's been dyeing her hair for 15 years. I've been dyeing my hair for nine years. So she's still got like seven, six, seven years ahead of me. So I should just trust her. Right. And I did. And it came out great. And I mean, my face and my neck are super sore and they hurt because I, like I said, I've never used black before and it looked like I got in a fight with my hair because if you can see, like you can still see black. I tried my best to cover it or like my ears are still like black. Yeah. And you can see like little spots on my neck and jaw and <laughs> you can like kind of see <laughs> she's like you look like you got in a fight with your hair so like oh my gosh it's terrible so I'm have to wear long sleeves a lot of makeup and my hair has to stay down and I was like I have never done my hair black I used to be blonde platinum like platinum champagne blonde for the longest time and then I started recently doing colors and like they don't stain the way black does so I never had this problem well except that blue that damn dark blue stained my neck for like two weeks and I scrubbed the crap out of my neck and it just like would not go away I was like well I'm a smurf for two weeks um but yeah and with your hair being my hair is really long so when you're doing it you t every time you move it it like hits your arm or it hits your face and it's like whips you or it whips around. And I was like, <laughs> I was trying to be so careful. So I didn't get it everywhere and it still was everywhere. Like I had dye dripping down my face and down the side of my face. And I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, this is why I need my sister here. So she can dye my hair again because she used to dye my hair all the time when I lived in California. So yeah. I feel like I've wasted half of this podcast talking about random crap. So yeah, um, I do have one idea. Um, seeing as I do do some knitting, which I hadn't picked up any this week. Um, I was thinking, I was juggling this idea in my head is doing a separate knitting podcast only because in the title, it's Crochet Podcast. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'm wondering if it would just be easier to separate the two for those who want to watch just crochet can watch the Crochet Podcast. Those who want to watch, learn, see what I'm knitting can go to my knitting podcast, my fictional knitting podcast at the moment. Um, it'd still be on this channel, but instead of Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast, it'd be the Yarn Journey Knitting Podcast. So I'll have two videos that come out a week. Um, 
I don't know if it'll be on the same Sunday, just record one after the other, or um, do separate days, so like maybe a Wednesday. See, that's the thing, it's hard to do it during the week because my husband's not home, and that means one podcast is gonna have crappy lighting. So I try to do Sunday because my husband's home, he can watch the kids for me, and I can put podcasts because I tried podcasting when he wasn't here, and with my kids, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. So I'm thinking it might just be like one after the other. Um, if you like that idea, let me know, comment below, because if you that'd be interested, I mean, I'm very, I'm, I'm someone that likes to compartmentalize. So knitting here, crochet here. <laughs> like if I start having different hobbies, I'm gonna have a podcast for every freaking hobby. Um, Cause I'm that kind of person that I like to put everything in its place. It's not very typical of a Gemini, to be honest, but I have been like that. <laughs> I don't know why. I just like to keep things where they're supposed to be with what they're supposed to be with. So if you would like that, let me know. Um, I'm not too worried about it being too much work because I literally just record Put a few slides in and put it up on YouTube just because I don't edit I don't have the time it takes way too long you know podcast notes mm, aren't a big deal I'll probably just put the podcast notes I won't have a group for the knitting podcast if I have one it'll just all the show notes will be below and that'll be it but I like having a group for the crochet podca podcast because I am a crocheter first and foremost but if that sounds interesting to you, let me know. And then that way we can get this all situated, situated. So yeah, this podcast was not supposed to be this long. This is what happens when I ramble to you guys. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I will see you guys next Sunday and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you guys later.